This is the, probably one of the neatest features for fish hunting. It's called side imaging in hand. Hit your menu button, scroll down, there'll be three or four options, sensitivity, your area coverage, your chart speed. You'll have one called side imaging in hand. This sharpness is what we're changing. When you change sharp, sharpness and off, is basically going to give you the best detail as far as picture quality of your image. Now, if you want to hunt fish, you can use this sharpness feature to make those fish jump out. What it does is it back shadows the strong returns that they jump out at you. If you look here in these circles, you can barely see these fish showing up in this creek here. I turn my sharpness to low actually starts making them easier to find here. Go to medium, they start jumping out. You notice we start losing some resolution because we're back shadowing those stronger returns from here. But the fish is what I'm most interested in when I'm using side imaging in hand to make them jump out. And then there is a high setting that really makes them things jump out at you. I typically, when I'm fish hunting, will run it on lower medium. If I need a little bit more, I'll come in here and turn it up to high. This is a Hummingbird exclusive. Uh, all current units have side imaging hands built in them. And any unit, any side imaging unit built since 2004 with software update will have this feature. Uh, this, this, the side imaging cursor. Uh, this is a valuable tool. If you look, we've got a little stick out here. I can actually activate my four-way cursor here move my cursor, will pop up here, and I can use that four-way cursor to move it over the top of that. When I move that, it's going to bring up this pop-up box telling me about this cursor information. The cursor, this 49.8 foot, is from, this is my boat path, the most current to the oldest. So when I went by that, that point, that cursor was 49.8 foot from the boat path that I went by. So I can... What we do is every time it pings one of these, we have an XY coordinate, our, our GPS coordinate. When you move that cursor over and you put that cursor on top of that spot and you hit mark, it adds 49.8 foot in the direction that cursor is moved to that waypoint to give you a pinpoint location of where that piece of structure is, not where the boat's at. The, the, the depth is going to come up if you're in the water column or you're in 2D mode. 2D sonar. This is the same pop-up box you were asking how far that fish was back. Same thing works here. This distance here is the distance the boat is right now from that way. If I continue to drive the boat forward, this number is going to get bigger. If I turn that boat around and start heading in the direction at 134 degrees, back compass heading back towards that, I could actually put, make that zero by driving my boat, that GPS receiver, right over the top. This number is going to change from the current position of your boat. This number is always going to be from where the distance you were when you drove by that spot. So but what you, this allows you to do is if you're running down a lake and you see something, you can hit the four-way cursor, bring it up, scroll around the screen. You can leave it on for eternity. Hit the mark button and it would remember the location exactly of that spot. I was going to ask, would you normally hit the mark to... If I wanted to save it, if you want to mark, and it's going to create a waypoint at that spot. Right, but, but can you navigate back to it without yeah. mark? If you know no, you would. That's well, you could. Guesswork. You could guess by using your bearing and your distance here to okay. get back to it. But if you hit mark, it's going to create a waypoint. The easiest thing is to get your take your cursor and your GPS screen, go over the waypoint, hit go to, and it's going to give you a navigation sequence to that waypoint. When you mark a spot you like like when you actually hit it it says way like point zero zero one. Yeah. Do you do you actually say and put like a you know and just change it from like point zero zero one to like a name? Do uh, you some I do. Some I mean, some some I some I change. Uh, typically if I'm in a tournament I'm just parking. Yeah, yours. Yeah, I, here's a fish. Here's the structure. Uh, I'm usually using them within a week. Okay. You know, so I pretty much. And then they're gone. Uh, but now I come back 
home, bring those waypoints back home, use my Humminbird PC, I'll go in, yeah. and then I'll start editing them. So the next time, if I go to that lake three years from now, I remember what it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, we've got waypoint management software coming, but it's not out yet. You're going to see a tremendous amount of steps. We've got some stuff that we brought out ahead of schedule to make sure we're, when we bring this product out, it's it's unreal. I mean, it it's got multiple icons. You're going to be able to have folder options to you can put all your waypoints in for this lake, that lake, you know, by lake. You could if you fish only one lake, you could have waypoints by. April, you can set up an April folder and every waypoint captured in April will be set up in there. Uh, there's there's going to be a lot of different ways. You can set it up by structure. You can move you can move your waypoints. I want rock structure, all my rock piles in one, one folder. Today I'm only going to go fish rock piles, so I only upload the rock, rock pile folder on the unit to look at it, and the only ones you see is your rock piles. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very time consuming process. A lot of a lot of software hours to get the product developed. Uh, they asked, should we bring it out first and make changes? I said, my recommendation was get it right first, bring it out where it's ultimate instead of learning something and having to read it. This is showing our side imaging zoom. Basically, activated our curves. This was actually a, I was just out fun fishing one day, beating the bank, not believing my side imaging thinking I knew where the fish were. I'm idling out of the cove, had zero success that day, and I see this big white box. I activate my cursor. I was 517 foot away, but I activate my cursor. I take the zoom, and I actually bring it over the top of it, zoomed in. I actually turned around after I seen it. Zoomed into it. Start looking at it. That is gizzard chan with hybrid stripers busted. Hmm. Zoomed into six power, you can actually see there's a big giant one there, there's another one, there's one there, 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 there. Turned around, took a big old spin of bait through there and just had a ball. I mean, it was it was one of those situations where that using that cursor put me exactly back on that spot. Side imaging didn't lie, told me where the fish were instead of me thinking I knew where the fish were. And having a fun time versus going home at the end. This is a new feature called Contour. Uh, is it for everybody? No. Basically, what Contour mode does is takes the water column out of the image. It allows us to start looking at structure more as it, it actually lays underneath of the boat without looking at the water column. This is actually a boat ramp. There's a courtesy dock here. The, the courtesy docks like they slide up and down the ramp. Uh, this is actually my boat trailer sitting on the boat ramp. Uh, this is actually a boat that is sunking off the end of the boat ramp down here. Here is contour mode taking the water column out. We basically see that structure exactly how it lays underneath the water. You can tell that boat distance is just off the end of the ramp. The other one, you think it's a little bit farther, but it's actually, I would say, looking at 100 foot, we're looking at 15 to 20 foot at the end of the ramp. Still have your same detail image, but it, it works very good for search and, search and rescue. If you're looking for structure only, not worried about fish, it's going to give you that representation of the water column underneath. Uh, some people say, well, I don't get that, that useful data in the water column. If you don't, if you're not needing it at that time, contour mode is a good option for you. The new, another new feature is the side imaging range lines for 2011. Basically, we've got a pond dam here, and we've got a spillway here. But actually, they built this as a to put brood stock in before Truman Lake was developed. They had a concrete spillway here. A couple of neat things is this is the concrete wall, vertical surface. Real crisp white return here. This is another concrete wall, but you can tell the height of that wall by the shadow front. Using our contour range lines, I went in, turned on contour mode. If you go into the sonar master menu, you can turn this on or off. 
one of the things I did with this is I adjusted my my left my area of coverage to move that range line. If it's set at 100, it's going to be it's not going to display numbers here. It's going to be 25, 50, 75, 100. If they're even numbers, even round numbers like 100. Uh, when I started moving it to 112, these numbers pop up and they actually I can move that line. Now, while the image is scrolling, I can actually tell you that it's 84 foot away from the post, that wall. Away. So you can start using this as a distance measuring tool and use your area of coverage to move these lines to match up for the, the, for the structure or the fish you're looking for. Do you know what software load that's in? Uh, it was the February this year. It's in the 5.4. I, yeah. 5.4, yeah. I think, when it came out. <coughs> it was, the, it was the, the main software that came out January, February. It was January, February this okay. year. Typically, Hummingbird, our, our new hot features for the year will probably be online by March. Uh, that's usually where we got all these new features. Typically, throughout the year, you can go in. There'll, there may be minor tweaks. There was one last week. Uh, on the Hummingbird website now, if you go into the support tab, they'll actually tell you everything that's changed in that. The, the 5.5 says, I think, no user uh, recognizable features. So that's probably tweaking uh, performance of maybe side imaging algorithms or 2D sonar. You know, it's tweaks of software. You're not going to see a major feature change like this, but it's going to improve the performance of your unit. Do you generally load those as soon as they come out, or? Yes. I pretty much keep. Unlike a Microsoft today. update, where you. Went. Well, I don't know if it's as bad as a, what's it, Adobe, that it does it about every day. Yeah. Because that's the one that pops up every morning yeah. when you turn on your computer. I think it's about like a jackrabbit. Flash. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be flash. Uh, this is our new navigation, side imaging navigation feature. If you, if you recognize our boat was always blue up here and always headed north. If you set up a navigation sequence, uh, navigate to a waypoint, you can stay in full sight imaging mode, and this boat icon now will point you in the direction you need to go to get to your waypoint. So if you, could, you could be scanning full screen without having to watch GPS and see which direction you need to go if you want to go to the waypoint. If you want to look at something towards, like if you have a brush pile, and you want to see if those fish are still on that brush pile, you can set a navigation to it, turn your side imaging on, watch this boat icon up here, drive to it and see those fish on that brush pile, or if they're before it, after it, around the point. It's, it's a new feature that, uh, for 2011. <coughs>